This is a Fox News alert. Any moment now, the president will be addressing supporters in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Just before arriving, the president announced the departure of his acting DHS secretary. He should have plenty to say tonight, too, about Ukraine, his 2020 rivals, and who knows what else. It was a remarkable rally last night. We expect another tonight. We'll go to the president as soon as he begins to speak. But in the meantime, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. An update on the story we've been following for the last few days. So by day, Steve Kerr is the coach of the Golden State Warriors basketball team in the state of California. But in his spare time, Kerr moonlights as a political pundit. He's always happy to share his hot take on American politics. He's like a one-man Twitter. The president's a racist, he'll say, and you have too many guns. When Steve Kerr talks like that, the people around him applaud. They think he's brave for saying things that not a single person in their world disagrees with. It's the kind of bravery that echoes consensus and bows before power, which is to say it's not bravery at all, it's cowardice. Just the other day, someone asked Steve Kerr what he thinks of the government of China, the government that's constructed the largest police state in the history of the human race. Maybe because the NBA does do a great deal of business in China, Kerr suddenly seemed flummoxed by the question, fascism or democracy? It's a tough choice, he said. I don't want to weigh in. But as Steve Kerr discovered last night, sometimes you don't have a choice. He was asked again about China, and this time he answered the question. Sure, he said China has problems, but so does the United States. I mean, China is a racist ethno state that sends religious minorities to concentration camps and executes political prisoners to steal their organs. But in America, they sell guns at Walmart. So really, there's a moral equivalence there. It has not come up in terms of people asking me about it, uh, people discussing it. Um, no. Nor has uh, our record of uh, human rights abuses come up either. People in China didn't ask me about, uh, you know, people owning AR-15s and mowing each other down in a mall. I wasn't asked that question. The world is a complex place and there's more gray than black and white. Uh -huh. Some things aren't that gray, though, like putting Muslims in concentration camps by the hundreds of thousands. Steve Kerr and the NBA, it turns out, were made for each other, tailor-made. The NBA epitomizes modern woke capital, ruthlessness, under the guise of compassion. So, of course, they employ Kerr, who epitomizes the modern, mindless elite left. Kerr is happy to trash his own country whenever he gets the chance. He gets to feel good doing it and gives up not one thing in return. He receives only accolades. But when real evil stares him in the face, he has nothing to say. What's the difference? The difference is real evil is powerful, and there are costs to opposing it. You can get hurt. There are also rewards for accepting it. Both Kerr and the NBA have made their choice very clear. Earlier this week, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver claimed the NBA is ready to stand by free speech no matter what the consequences from China. He lapped up the subsequent praise from the press corps, which is no surprise. Our media loves to cover for China, too. But it was all a lie. Several NBA teams are currently on an exhibition tour in China right now. So that presents a rare opportunity. Unlike ordinary people, superstar NBA players can say whatever they want. They could speak their minds about China's regime. They could get attention and avoid consequences. You're going to put some NBA player in jail? No. They had a golden opportunity to speak real truth to real power. But the NBA stopped them. Today, the NBA announced that none of the players on the tour in China will be able to speak to the media for the rest of the trip wouldn't want any of them using their free speech the wrong way and criticizing their Chinese masters. They're all like this, by the way. The coach of the San Antonio Spurs, Greg Popovich, he's aggressively political. He calls the president a soulless coward who brings up the dark side in human beings. Okay, whatever. In 2016, he bragged that as an American, he was allowed to speak his mind on anything. Yeah, that's absolutely right. But what is he using that free speech for? He's not using it at all. When asked about the NBA and China, which is a critical, the critical issue as of today, Popovich has nothing to say. Instead, he blasted Trump for his handling of the Jamal Khashoggi assassination last year. That's a non sequitur. I mean, whatever. But what does that have to do with China? Nothing. Why do you answer that? Well, because Saudi Arabia has a smaller basketball market than China does. So there's no risk. And by the way, where's Dallas, Ma Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban? 
He's never been afraid to speak his mind. He's got an interesting mind and a lot to say. He's come on this show at least once, maybe twice, to tell us what he thinks. But so far, he's had nothing at all to say about China and its control over the NBA. So what does all of this prove? It proves what you've known for a long time. The ruling class is totally phony. They're weak and they're pathetic. And that's obvious now. They talk a big game about human rights. We care about people. Happy to lecture you about democracy and about their own moral vitality. They're way more impressive than you are. But it was all a sham. They didn't mean a word of it. The single biggest threat to your freedoms right now as Americans is not Russia or Saudi Arabia or Iran or Donald Trump. No, the single greatest threat to your freedom right now, as you well know, we all know, is China. China's the threat. And anyone who pretends otherwise isn't simply clueless, they're an accomplice.